cord to the cloud. There we go. <laughs> and now I am recording and I am Andrea Gigline. And thank you for joining me today for the Unicorn Challenge. And with me today is Judith Pinkerton. And in a moment, I'm going to introduce Judith, but I'm just going to give you a really great metaphor for what just occurred relative to the Unicorn Challenge. So the Unicorn Challenge is 60 days, very easy, one minute videos, something for you to, an action for you to take to keep you on target. And here's the deal. Judith and I have been chatting away for about 15 minutes. I thought that I had recorded what we were doing and lo and behold, I had not. And so I said, oops, we have to start again. Well, that's what the Unicorn Challenge is really about, starting again. So know that anything you want to achieve, you can every time you take the next step towards it. First step would be to download the Unicorn Challenge and the links will be in the description below. But before I go any further, I want to ask my wonderful Judith Pinkerton, who did join me today. Judith, tell everyone what inspired you to join the conversation today. I really appreciated that you were wanting to benefit a nonprofit. I'm all about giving. And so I was like, yeah, and and, and I get something out of it too. Woo yes. And yes. I adore you. So I was like, woohoo, I get to spend time with <laughs> this is this is a beautiful benefit for the two of us who know each other because professionally and even at the very distant relative line we we are connected and what Judith is mentioning is something that I mentioned when we started before um and thank you for remembering so so today's zoom was being anyone who wanted to join just had to do a small donation to one of my favorite organizations, Teach for America in Las Vegas, and they're, they're national. Um, the reason I chose to do that is really what the Unicorn Challenge is about. Um, just because Judith, myself, or any one of a host of people you may encounter in your life, you, including yourself, may be super competent and have all the credentials and doing it all the right things, maybe things are not going well. I know that I could say that for myself. The amount of effort that I'm putting into the illusion of the result is not, it, it's not where I want it to be. So I went back in my own history and I remembered the gift that I was given at the beginning of my career through nonprofits where they would hire me to come in and do the behavioral science work that I was doing because they needed the help and I needed to learn how to use the work that I was doing with others. So that actually seeded in my heart a way of giving back. And it just dawned on me that, you know, if it worked then, whether it works now or not, what I know is that it makes me feel good. And my friends at Teach for America have been so gratified by the fact that I even thought to do it, that I've been making a list of like how many other organizations I'm gonna do it for. So that's enough about that part. Um, the very first step in the Unicorn Challenge is doing a dump list. And I have my little dump list. I date them. I probably do them about every three or, three or four times a year. And then I have a heyday crossing the stuff off and also seeing what stuff doesn't get done. Um, I will admit, I looked at one from May of 2020, right before we got on this call. And there are things on that list that I thought I was going to do. I, I I called the pandemic the great pause. After the pause, I was gonna I was gonna have all these things done. Yeah, they weren't that important. So Judith, one before we get to your dump list and why you're here, I want people to understand the work that you do. Oh well. <laughs> Music therapy is the name of the game. And uh, because there's only 10,000 of us across the country, 
Um, I've moved into doing uh, virtual training for those that are not even in the profession wow. uh, because there's not enough of us to go around. There's hundreds of jobs that are going unfilled and the government's giving out six figure salaries <laughs> to music therapists. It's, like, it's, it's reaching a new, yeah, a new trend here. So uh, Music for Life really stands for utilizing all music genres uh, in a prescribed way. Um, and you're taught that through our virtual trainings and products and all of that to uh, actualize behavioral health goals, mental health, um, so that emotions, mood control, emotion regulation, resilience, all of that is done simply by using your iPhone or your portable, powerful command center, no matter where you're at. So super. I support people doing that. <laughs> and so... they can read it at musicforlife.com. So you feel like you need a challenge at this point or that you need a little push in addition to just wanting to spend some time with me. <laughs> so, yeah. So the push for me is um, because I also am raising a, a four-year-old and caretaking. Amazing. Parents that it's like, it's easy to get distracted. Yes. Um, and so I am wanting to make sure that I'm on task at, with something every day. Um, not that I'm not, but it, it just seems that I get to the end of the day and go, okay, so what did I accomplish? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, that's a great segue also to some of the, the way I've broken down the tips. So like the first one is to do the dump list, then mm -hmm. the next tip, or I, I don't have them memorized in order, but basically then break it down. What's the top three things. And then from there, a few days later, you'll pick what's the one thing. And then what types of things? And honestly, that's all it is, is that continual reminder so that the day-to-day -day life doesn't keep eating into your ability to just pause. Like, you know, I have a, a number of lines in my work. You know, one of the funny ones that I have is that um, it, if you don't do the free stuff, my fee is not the problem. Well, the other thing that I say around the unicorn challenge is if 60 seconds is too long for you to pause and focus on you and things you're trying to achieve in your life, you know, the problem is not that goal. <laughs> the very first goal has got to be you being willing to say, regardless of what else is going on in the world, I've got to find X amount of time and the challenge builds in, you know, that time first in the 60 second increments, then doing the different steps. But, you know, some of the steps are, you know what, take a day off. Don't even think about this. And by the time you get to, to day 30, I purposely am repeating the process so that you can begin to know Oh, right. I'm never supposed to be done. I, yeah, things do get in the way. Like truly being able to make so what of life. So what that I didn't get everything done on my to-do list yesterday? Did the important things get done? <laughs> mm -hmm. We seem to get those things done. Are the people in our lives alive and healthy? Like, did we do the <laughs> things that were necessary? <laughs> Yes. Yes. So tell me just off the top of your head, in addition to, and, and let me tell you something, it's quite an admirable, ab, admirable goal to just know that you must make time each day to do one thing towards your additional goals in addition to your family and caretaking. Like that in and of itself is an enormous goal. Just setting that stake in the ground that my interests and what I've devoted my life work to is as important to those I devote my life to. And that's a huge goal <laughs> right there. So I'll say in a little different way, you know, when you have devoted that time 
and you are now doing it on a consistent basis, is there something in your work that you're hoping would materialize? Yeah, so um, I have a <laughs> a coach who has said, okay, Judith, um, you need to write your own book about mm -hmm. your own stuff that's happened over the decades. And <laughs> like, all right, I already have a lot of books out there. I have, you know, recordings. I mean, I've got so much stuff that's already out there. Yes. You know, now I got to do another book. <laughs> ah, um, but th this is where our friend AI may come in handy, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah so it's it's interesting so it's just going back into um different uh word docs that have been created that haven't been publicly uh shared um that can strategically be placed within a, a book that is teaching people not about well yeah so the stories are interesting but um more about you know life uh challenges and and how you go about doing that and oh here's an example <laughs> that kind of thing so it's it's more thought provoking that I want to um get to as the end result as opposed to just telling a story well you know in the book tomorrow mind mm -hmm. that's exactly what the book does the science is very solid about resilience and all the attributes the behavioral attributes and the techniques such as using music, these are all scientifically proven things about how do you live the best life possible. What is interesting is hearing someone else's example mm. helps me see things that I may have overlooked in my own life or because it, I've been so busy for so long that I just don't bother to to appreciate everything I've gone through and just that level of reappreciating that, wow, I did make it through that gives you the inspiration to go on. And all kidding aside, so do you use AI in your work? I have. Yeah. Uh, I've and I've been surprised at what's already out there that I didn't know was out there. Correct. <laughs> um, so, because my work is so unique. So it's like, wow. So there is some stuff that's already out in AI that that is correct. that is helpful. So, you know, I've been playing with consolidating my Don't Die series. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a really good example. You know, I'll, I'll speak to this more generally first with the Unicorn Challenge. So all of us have lots of work that we've already done. I have the Don't Die book series and they're three separate books, but they have four overarching themes that run through these books. And they're four core questions, um, like changing your perspective and then your perspective changes. And then the question is, what perspectives do you need to change? And I tell stories and I do them in the small. So I, I've been toying with how would I organize three books into one story? So I have that conversation with AI and it gives me an outline. Mm. And so that's, you know, use the resources. That's the overarching tip and how the unicorn challenge comes into. When you take these one minute little breaks, you will be surprised how many resources you actually have at your disposal that you just didn't have the time to think about because you were busy taking care of the loved ones in your life while you're also trying to think about, you know, a book? Do I really want to do a book? And then there's always the question, why? Like, why would I do a book now? what's the service? And for those of us who write books, um, and especially at this point in life, the last thing we need is to have people know about our lives. <laughs> we already know it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're really comfortable with that. Um, but what does matter is how can the experiences that I've gone through help others 
take the next step they need to take. And I could very much imagine with being, you know, grounded in a field that you helped bring to life, such as music therapy, that that really would have an impact on a lot of people as they're trying to discern how do I help in this world? So I think it is a very admirable, huge goal. <laughs> You know, I remember when I was first doing my very first book a few decades ago, and, and I was like, ah, I have so much I want to say. And I had a coach at that point. She goes, you know, Judith, all you got to do is put one word on a page. People get away with doing one word on a page. And I'm like, yes, what? And Just one word? <laughs> you know, you've mentioned the word coach twice, and I really want to yeah. thank you uh, for that, because that's another thing that all of us having support, having support when people have a specific expertise that you may not have, getting that type of um, coordinated effort to push you even further. It's one thing to have something that you can download for free and watch free on YouTube. Then you may want the next step. And that's a very important step um, you know, it's really interesting. That's the part of my work that I have pretty much allowed to go dormant because I am so interested in disseminating the information through podcasts and things like this. And that where I'm using the unicorn challenge for myself right now is holding myself accountable for producing the content in the areas that I want to be known for going forward versus what I have done in the past. So, um, you know, I don't want to keep us too long on any of this. The Unicorn Challenge is free. It's step-by-step. -step. You can comment both on YouTube or me directly. My email is right in it. Um, is there anything that you would like us to either talk about or think through while we're together? Uh, hmm. You know, I was just wanting to get to dive in. Okay. And to understand, okay, what am I going to do today? What am I going to yep. do tomorrow? So yep. I'm going to look at the, the workbook Great. and do my dump list. Okay. And look at the tip, the video and uh just um keep on on task with that and see what comes up for me i'm i'm pretty i'm a pretty much a self-starter yes um and i love direction and right. i love people that don't hesitate to tell me um what else i didn't think of <laughs> right 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 that's great that's great well and oh so one thing about your dump list um, I will tell you what comes in really handy for me. I actually have mine broken down, things that are business oriented, things that are travel oriented and social stuff, like so that I'm giving everything equal space when I start. Mm -hmm. When I ask the question, what's important? What are the top three things? I'm, I'm looking at the whole depth and breadth of what's available and making a declaration, you know what? These are the things that are important to me right now. Even if I say that's important, um, the truth is what I really would make me feel the best is to put some time and energy towards this. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that for me, I know a lot of times the family stuff comes easy because they're right in my face I'm going to stop whatever I'm going to do because they need it. I have to put that same devotion to one or two of my top goals in the area. Like I love my work and it keeps me as alive. It, my work keeps me more alive than cooking dinner. Let me just be clear. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to be truthful, <laughs> I love the gratification of them liking dinner. However, <laughs> I like my work better. So, um, you know, with that, what I just want to tell everyone, 
Do work that you love in a way that you can give it back to organizations that you love to. Helping others helps you feel better. Feeling and sensing out and knowing how you are feeling towards the goals you have is as important as writing the goals down. And most important, remember to download your free copy, and I never know how to do that right. Uh, download your free copy, start somewhere. And 60 seconds is a great place to start. I am Andrea Gigline, Judith Pinkerton for Music for Life. Thank you so much for joining me today. And for everyone, please subscribe, do the work, it works. Thank you. Now we don't have to...